Hello friends, recently one of the friends from our circle called me in the morning and started narrating his business story. I observed while talking with him that he was little bit worried about problems of current assets management in his business organization. He further said that in my business things are getting difficult day by day and I am not able to manage my assets and at the same time working capital also. He also narrated he is not able to manage current assets such as account receivables, inventory and etc. Therefore, I am not able to apply for finance to bankers and other financial institutions. Why does this happen? What was his problem? Is the current asset management wrong or he is not being able to manage his current assets? Lots of businesses suffer from losses due to mismanagement in current assets. What does current assets exactly mean? Current asset is defined as a current asset also called as a current short term asset is a resource expected to be used to benefit a company within a year or the current accounting period. Hence, these resources are short term in nature and will be sold, collected or used up in 12 months period. The most common current assets are cash, account receivables, inventory and prepared expenses. These are all resources that a company can use in the current period to purchase new assets, pay dates and expenses or convert into cash. Hello students, welcome to the important session of costing of current assets. In this topic, we will highlight concept of assets, types of assets, importance of assets, key components of current assets, formula to calculate current assets, uses of current assets, valuation of current assets, valuation of tangible assets, valuation of intangible assets, characteristics of tangible assets, tangible assets and business importance, methods of costing of current assets and importance of costing of assets. So students, it is must to understand the concept of asset in a proper manner. So it is must to understand the definition of assets given by several authors. First of all, we will see a definition of an asset. Asset is an uh, item of property owned by a person or company regarded as having value and available to meet debts, commitments and legacies. From definition, we can simply understand that an asset is an item of property owned by a person or a company and regarded as having value available to meet debts, commitments and legacies. The concept of asset is divided into two categories. One is tangible asset and another one is intangible asset. Tangible assets refers to a company's assets that are physical or that can be seen which have been purchased by an organization to produce its products or goods or to provide services that it offers. Tangible assets can be categorized as either fixed such as structures, land and machinery or current such as cash. There are two subcategories of assets. First one is fixed asset. Fixed assets are a company's tangible non-current assets that are used in its business operations. The word fixed indicates that these assets will not be used up, consumed or sold in the current accounting year. A company's fixed assets are reported in the non-current or long-term asset section of the balance sheet in the section described as property, plant and equipment. The fixed assets except for land will be depreciated and the accumulated depreciation will also be reported under property, plant and equipment. Point number B, current assets. Current assets are important to business because they can be used to fund day to day business operations. These assets can be used to pay for ongoing operations expansions since the term is reported as a dollar value of all assets and resources. These assets can be easily converted to cash in a short period of time and also represents a company's liquid assets. I hope 
you all have understood the concept of tangible assets and its types. Let us move on to the next type of asset that is intangible assets. Intangible assets are assets that take no physical form. They may include patents, logos, franchises and trademarks. Say for example, multinational company with asset of 15 billion dollars goes bankrupt one day and none of its tangible assets are left. It can still have value because its intangible assets such as its logo and patents that may investors and other companies may be interested in acquiring. After knowing the concept of asset and its types, let us move on to the costing of current assets. Already we have seen the concept of current assets in the types of tangible assets in detailed manner. Now we are going to focus on some of the aspects of costing of current assets one by one. What current asset tells you? Current assets are important to business because these can be used fund day to day business operations. This can be also used to pay for ongoing operating expenses. In other words, these are assets which can be easily converted to cash in a short period of time. These assets are also called as companies liquid assets. I hope you all have understood the concept of current assets and important for the business. Now we will discuss the key components of current assets. So many things are included in current assets, but there are three major key components of current assets and these we will discuss one by one. First one is account receivables. It represents the money due to a company for goods or services delivered or used but not yet paid by customers. If a business is making sales by offering longer terms of credit to its customers, a portion of its accounts receivables may not qualify for inclusion in current assets. Second one is inventory. Raw materials, components and finished products are included as current assets, but the consideration for this item may need some careful thoughts. Difference accounting methods can be used to value inventory. Third one is prepared expenses. It represents advance payment made by company for goods and services to received in the future and these are considered current assets. Prepared expenses could include payment to insurance companies and contractors. Thus, current assets formulation is a simple summation of all the assets that can be converted to cash within one year. For example, looking at firm's balance sheet, we can add up. Current assets summations I have given is equal to C plus C plus I plus AR plus MS plus P plus OLA. Now we are going to understand the short forms. C for cash, C for cash equivalents, I for inventory, AR for account receivables, MS for marketable securities, P for prepared expenses and OLA for other liquid assets. After understanding the summation of current assets, we are going to talk on the correlation between current assets and liquidity. Current assets and liquidity Current assets can also be referred to as liquid assets and quick assets of your financial state or the liquidity ratio. This shows whether or not you have the funds to meet your short term obligations and is calculated by dividing your total current assets by your total current liabilities. The result will show the number of times your current liabilities are covered. So, if the ratio has a value greater than 1, then they are covered. What is costing of an asset? Costing of an asset simply pertains to the value assigned to a specific property including stocks, options, bonds, buildings, machinery or land. It is conducted usually when a company or asset is to be sold, insured or taken over. Costing of tangible assets. Tangible assets refers to companies assets that are physical or that can be seen. These assets are purchased by an organization to produce its products or goods or to provide the services. Tangible assets are assets with a physical form and that hold value. Examples include property, plant and equipment. 
Students, now we are going to see the characteristics of tangible assets. First, they come in physical form, which means they can be seen, felt or touched. They are depreciated over a period of time. They possess a scrap value or residual value. They can be used as collateral to obtain loans. They are used in the daily operations of the business. To compute the cost of tangible assets, the company needs to look at its balance sheet and identify tangible assets and intangible assets. From the total assets, deduct the total value of intangible assets. From what is left, deduct the total value of liabilities. Net tangible assets. Net tangible assets is defined as the difference between company's fair market value of tangible assets and fair market value of all liabilities. In other words, it is the total asset at fair value, less tangible assets, less total or outside liability at fair value. Now, we will talk about the costing of intangible assets. Costing of intangible assets, intangible assets are assets that take no physical form. They may include patents, logos, franchises and trademarks. Say for example, a multinational company with a set of 15 billion dollars goes bankrupt one day and none of its tangible assets are left. It can still have value because of its intangible assets such as its logo and patents. Intangible assets are on the other hand lack a physical form and consist of things such as intellectual property, trademark, patents, etc. I hope you all have understood the concept of tangible assets and intangible assets thoroughly. Now, we will proceed to methods of costing of current assets. We will highlight on methods of costing of current assets. Costing of current assets can be done using various methods which include the first method that is cost method. The cost method is the easiest way of asset valuation. It is done by basing the value on the price for which the asset was bought. Second method, market value method. The market value method bases the value of the assets on its market price, its projected price when it sold in open market. In the absence of a similar assets in the open market, the replacement value of the net realizable value method is used. Method number three, base stock method. The base stock method requires company to keep a certain level of stocks whose value is assessed based on the value of base stock. Method number four, standard cost method. The standard cost method uses expected cost instead of actual cost often based on the company's past experience. The costs are obtained by recording differences between expected and actual costs. Let us discuss with the importance of costing of assets. Costing of an asset is one of the most important things that need to be done by companies and organizations. There are many reasons for costing of assets including right price. Asset valuation helps identify the right price for an asset, especially when it is offered to be bought or sold. Taxes, every individual or organization that owns property or other assets need to pay taxes for their assets. By doing assets costing, taxes are calculated accurately. Point number three, companies merger. In the event that two companies are merging, or if a company is to be taken over, costing of asset is important because it helps both parties to size up the business. Loan application. When a company applies for a loan, the bank or financial institution may require collateral as protection against possible debt default. Costing of assets is needed then for the lender to determine the loan amount. Audit. Companies, especially public ones are regulated which means they need to present financial audits and reports for transparency. Part of the audit process involves verifying the cost of assets. Costing of current assets is an important aspect in business organization. It plays vital role the financial statements of the company. There are several methods of costing of current assets in practice and there are certain benefits of valuing of current assets. It has unique importance 
in the business that is stated. Costing of current asset is useful for several purposes such as calculating right price, paying accurate taxes to government, mergers and acquisitions, getting finance from bankers and audit. I hope you all have understood the topic costing of current assets thoroughly. Thank you.